So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and join me for a game of Small World by Days of Wonder, where we'll be taking control of fantasy races and monsters, battling it out and killing each other off because, well, it is a small world after all. Playing with me today and going first we have Rogue and Rogue is going to, from the options we have, pick the Fortified Humans. So Fortified allows her to place a fortification token once per turn in a region she controls and that region gets plus one defence and scores her plus one point. Humans score an extra point for each field they control and this will give her eight tokens. And it doesn't mean that it costs her anything either. She doesn't have to place any coins. These all move down. And then she's going to enter the board in this field up here. Costing two tokens. She'll then go three tokens for the mountain. And then three for this field space here. Removing the native. She likes the look of this city. And she's out of tokens. She doesn't get to use the reinforcement die because she wasn't short anywhere. She can now redistribute. And I think what she's going to do is she really wants to keep these field spaces. And especially this one. So she's going to do that. And she can then place a fortification which is going to go here as well. Then score wise she'll get one, two, three, four, five, six. She's getting bonus for these for being human and a bonus for the fortification. So she takes those coins and places them face down in front of her. Then for my first turn I'm gonna pass over the hill sorcerers and the seafaring orcs to take the diplomat skeletons. And our new one out, we've got Spirit Rat then. And as the Diplomat Skeletons, uh, as Diplomat I can name a race that I do not attack and they cannot attack me. So I think I'm going to go for Humans. Um, and then as Skeletons, for each two regions I conquer that are occupied, so that have tokens in that get removed, I get to add another skeleton in the redeploy stage. So I'm going to start by going two into there, three into there, removing one, three into there, removing a second one, two into there, and then I'll use the reinforcement die to try and take on this space here. And I manage with a roll of three. So now I redeploy and I took over three territories. So I gain one new token. Which I'll just add on there. So everywhere has got multiple on. Then before Rogue's turn we move up the turn track. And Rogue has an interesting decision. Because she takes back all her tokens and she's choosing to leave the three there. She can't attack me, so there's literally nowhere she can go with all these tokens. So she's going to have to, I think, go into decline. So going into decline, these excess get put back in the box. And the ones on the board flip over. The fort stays on the board because if we flip her race and power you can see the forts stay they no longer give the bonus point but they still do give a bonus to defense so points wise she gets one two three oh and we forgot to do my points so i should have got one two three four five points that's then rogue's turn done and it's my turn so i gather up my skeletons i'm going to leave the ones that are there 
um, and being a diplomat I can only name a race that's on the board and the humans can't attack me there's no races that can attack me so the diplomat aspect is not going to help me particularly this time but I'll go free there taking out this one Three there to take out this one and then I'll try and take this mountain so where's the reinforcement die there we go and I manage it uh, then distributing of tokens realized I was silly I should have gone after these never mind um, And, oh, I get another one because I took over two territories. And I'll place that there, I think. So that's my turn done, and we're on to round three. Except I forgot to do my score again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we can move on to round three. Rogue's then just going to take the hill sorcerers here so that she gets the coin. And they mean that she'll get bonus points for controlling hill zones. And that once a turn she can, per opponent, pick an adjacent space and replace one of their tokens. Conquering that zone if there was just the one token there. Obviously they can only be done if there's the one. If there's more than one token she has to pick somewhere else. So she will start by going free there. Four there, which means one skeleton goes back to me. And then she has two left, so she's going to try and reinforce to take this space here as it's worth an extra point to her. Uh, nope, she needed four tokens, so she didn't manage that. So she's going to drop those back there. And then use Sorcerer Power to replace this token. So points wise she gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I then gather up my skeletons. Hmm. And I think uh, now is the time to do this. So we'll go four there, we'll take these out. And then we'll go for a reinforcement roll on there. Which manage. Which then means I get plus one for conquering two regions. And we'll go there. And we'll take this and place it there. And we'll take this and place it there. Um, so then score-wise, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the diplomat power, we're going to name Rogue, so her sorcerers can't attack me. And that's why I made sure these had doubles so she couldn't swap on me either, meaning I've trapped her in again. And it's the end of the round. So, given that she's trapped and keeps being trapped, it feels like she needs to take a different approach. So, she's going to go into decline because, well, she can't do anything where she is. Which means that she loses her humans. So we return those to the box. And none of her sorcerer powers continue with her in decline. So she gets a score of three. Then it's my turn, and I've got one, two, three, four spare skeletons. I'm wondering if now's the time to go into decline with them, or if I should push and try and keep going. Because she's about to come back on the board and be able to hurt me again. Hmm. I think now might be the time. I'm going to go into decline. And none of my powers 
work while in decline either. So that's the end of the round. Oh, and I do get points though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. And my going into decline changes things for Rogue because she had been going to go for the flying ghouls, which means giving up three points just so that she had flying and she wasn't getting trapped by me. But now she doesn't have to worry about that diplomat aspect anymore. Hmm. So what does she want to do? I think she'll just go for the first one, get the point, and the seafaring orcs. And seafaring means that she can go on the water spaces of the board and conquer them. And orcs get an extra point for each token they remove off the board in a turn. So she'll go two, three, three, and then two which means she gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Then for my turn, I think I'm going to go for the wealthy halflings because this wealthy gives you instantly seven points and that seems pretty good. The halflings, they can enter anywhere on the board and then place a halfling home uh, that cannot be conquered by anyone. So that'll work for me. And our new one out. So we've got the underneath the pillaging wizards we find the Commando Trolls. And I'll enter here. So I place my hole there. And then I'll go from there to there. So I place the other one there. And then go there. there and try for that one. The reinforcement die. That's cocked so let's re-roll that. Oh. Throwing tokens everywhere. Um, so, um, oh got it. I'm being very lucky with that. It's usually called the dice of blanks but uh, very few blanks when I'm rolling. So those are safe. They can't be conquered so there's no point leaving things there. Um, this feels like the most vulnerable spot, with a little bit of vulnerability there, so let's go like that. And then score, well we have one, two, three, four, five for the skeletons, then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I've just realised that on Rogue's last turn, although that is the end of round, so I should move that. On Rogue's last turn, she took off two of my skeleton tokens. So because of her orc power, should have got two extra points for that. So I will give her those now. Um, and yeah, then it's her turn. So let's gather up. Well, she's safe on the water. She had intended to go after the other water, but that's a bit far out of reach now. So I think the sensible thing for her to do is to take out my skeletons because the halflings are pretty well protected over here. So I think the skeletons are the best thing she can do to reduce my points. And there's no easy way for her to gain points, no undefended territories. So she'll go one and two, I think. Does she want to start pushing towards the halflings? I mean, there's not much point. She go there, take that one to deny me the point, and it gives her an extra point as well. Um, and there's no point her remaining over there, so she might as well just heavily reinforce over here. I'm thinking. And then points. She gets two for the tokens she removed. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My halflings have got five tokens here. Hmm. Well, I think we'll go three for the mountain and two to try and take this woodland here. So we need the dice, and that's cocked. 
and we get a blank. Uh, so redistribution, we'll go. I think we'll go like that. Should keep us nice and safe. Uh, score wise, we've got one, two, three, just the three skeletons left on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points for me. So, on to round seven. And, hmm, what does Rogue want to do? She's got four spare orcs at the moment. I mean, she's got getting quite a good score at the moment, but she needs to take more tokens off the board. So, more tokens off the board. The way for her to do that... and cost me points is to take out these skeletons so I think she's going to do that so she'll go one two three for the skeleton there and then she'll go one and trust in the dice which worked out nicely for her so then redistributing I think she's gonna keep all her efforts there um, so two points, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen points. So hmm, it's my go, and I think I'm gonna have to go into decline now. I think now is a sensible time. So, because I, I only have four spare halflings, um, my race that was in decline I only had one token out on the board left, so it wasn't really gaining me anything. So the uh, skeletons are returned to the box. And my halflings get me a score of one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's on to round eight. And Rogue doesn't really have any of these guys left. Oh, and the Hobbit holes should have gone with them going into decline. Um. She's only got two spare tokens, but three. Uh, but yeah, I think, she, I think she's going to go into decline. So the sorcerers say goodbye. And we flip the orcs who don't retain any power other than the seafaring. They do keep being able to be in water. And that is her turn done. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Potentially foolish, but I'm then gonna go one, two, three to take the Berserker Amazons. Revealing Forest Tritons. And as the Amazons, in addition to my 10 tokens, I get four extra just for the attacking phase. And because I'm Berserk, it means that for every attack, I get to roll the reinforcement die. So in this case, I got two. That means for this attack, I count as having two extra tokens. So I'm going to go there. Because I count as having three, which is enough to take that out. And then roll the dice again. And again, it's three. We'll go there. Ah. Uh, a zero, so I will go for three tokens there. A zero will go go two there. Oh, a two, so we'll go one there. A blank. We'll go three there. Let's wipe these orcs off the map as best as we can because the water is going to be safe for them. But... And I've still got two tokens left, so let's, let's roll that so it actually lands on the board. Uh, so I count as having one extra. So we'll go four. We'll go for the one there and roll again. And we count as having three. So we'll go with one token there. So then that was an epic turn. Reinforcements, I have to remove four tokens. 
because that's the Amazon thing. I get them for attacking only, which means I've got one more that I can choose to place. Um, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll leave it there. I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. So score-wise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we're into round nine. Greg's then going to pass over the Stout Dwarves, the Flying Ghouls, and the Spirit Ratmen to take the Pillaging Wizards. Revealing Underworld Giants. And the Pillaging means that for each token removed you get an extra point, so this is the same as the Orc power that she just had. And then Wizards get points for controlling territories with this magic symbol in. So she'll start by taking out this Amazon here, then this one here, and this one here, and then she's going to try and take this magic space here, but fail. Um, so we'll defend the magic. Points wise then, she gets for pillaging, she removed three Amazons, so that's three points, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the magic. I kind of feel the Amazons did their job with getting the huge points last turn and being a wave across the board and eliminating all those orcs, so they're going to go into decline. Um, it's going to cost me a lot of points this turn, but hopefully mean that the final turn I have a better turn. Uh, so all the halflings go away. As I say, costing me quite a lot of points this turn. But hopefully, overall, the best decision. Leaving me with just one, two, three, four, five, six points. And that puts us into the final round. So Rogue will gather up her forces with her wizards here. And she'll go free and free, and then try and take that again and fail. Yeah, we'll go with that. So uh, Rogue's points there, she's got two for tokens, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm then gonna pass up the stout dwarfs but take the flying ghouls. So flying means I can go anywhere and ghouls means that they stay working when they're in decline, which is gonna be irrelevant. And my ghouls will fly in and go there. There, 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 and there, which will give me one, two, three point, four points for Amazons, five, six, seven, eight, nine points, which means it's the end of the game and the final scores. Rogue has 84 points, and I have. 90 points so i win the game and that is small world by days of wonder i do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful if you have please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing and as always thanks for watching and bye for now